Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We'll bring, we'll bring the, the um, um, June 14th MPO Policy Committee meeting um, to order, and we'll begin with introductions, and we'll start to my left. April Rosenberger, proxy for Adam Wason, Public you, Works. Could you get the state of course. April Rosenberger, proxy for Adam Wason, Public Works. Yeah, for Ellisville Town Council. David Hiddle, proxy for Mayor, Care Th Mayor Carrie Thompson. Sarah Ryder, Ben CAC. Lisa Ridge, Monroe County Highway. The Bloomington Public Transit Corporation Board of Directors. Proxy for Tony McClellan. Jason Bank, and University. And online. Scott Ferris, uh, Monroe Hi. County Transformation Proxy. Courtney. Courtney Daly, Bloomington Common Council. And Julie. Okay. Um, moving on to approval of the meeting agenda. Move to approve the agenda. We have a motion. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If you could, uh, any public comment? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Bennett? Yes. Daly? Yes. Horn? Yes. Packer? Yes. McKim? Oh, sorry. Went one too high. Ferris. Yes. Ridge. Yes. Ryder Band. Yes. Swafford. Yes. Thomas. Hiddle. Yes. Oh, sorry. There we go. Now we got a yes. Uh, that was a yes from Hiddle and then uh, Rosenberg. And then we just had Jillian Kinsey join. And then I'll roll call Kinsey then. Uh. Jillian, we were just voting on the agenda. I'll say yes. Okay. <laughs> Or 12 zero, sorry. Okay. Uh, moving on to approval of minutes of May 10th, 2024. Move approval of the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none. Uh, roll call vote, please. Daly. Yes. Horn. Yes. Kinsey. Yes. Packer. Yes. Ferris. Yes. Ridge. Yes. Ryder Band. Yes. Swafford. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Hiddle. Abstain. Rosenberger. Yes. Bannock. Yes. 1101. All right. Uh, communications from the chair or vice chair. I don't have anything. Sarah, do you? Not specifically, no. Thank you. Okay. Uh, reports from officers and or committees. Um, Citizens Advisory Committee. Yes, the Citizens Advisory Committee met. Um, and we not only once again affirmed our uh, recommendation for the TIP amendments that we are going to be acting on today, I assume, uh, as well as we invited 
Rural Transit to come and speak to us about the issues that they've been having and what kind of support we can look to to enhance our transportation system across the MPO and their role in that transit system. We will be inviting BT to join us either this month or when we reconvene in August. Thanks. All right, Technical Advisory Committee. Nate was unable to make it today, um, April serving as his proxy, but Nate had sent a message that the TAC met on May 22nd and recommended approval of uh, the TIP amendments, uh, DES number 2101785 and DES number 1902772. All right, thank you. Uh, reports from the MPO staff, Heat Watch Program, and volunteers. Yes. So we have um, Anurag Bots from the Economic um, and Sustainable Development uh, Department from uh, the city. And so he will be presenting uh, the Heat Watch program and an additional slide. So Anurag, you're welcome to come to the podium um, and I will get this brought up. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Anurag Bhatt. I'm a McKinney Climate Fellow and I'll be working with ESD this summer. Uh, I specifically wanted to talk to you about uh, the Heat Watch campaign that ESD is conducting this summer. It's essentially the Heat Watch campaign is designed around mitigating heat effects uh, that our community might be facing and to better help prepare the citizens to, to better help uh, protect them from the heat coming heat effects. Uh, next slide, please. As you can see, uh, the map on the right, we, there's a typo there, I'm sorry. Uh, this map was created in 2018, but the data that was used to create this map was satellite imaging data, and hence it was not very precise. Uh, this year we, are, we have joined hands with IU, Environmental Resilience Institute, and NOAA to collect near surface temperature data and enhance this map's accuracy. Uh, along with this, we'd also be having air monitoring uh, done across the city, and we are also organizing a community survey that will help us access... Uh, Sorry, we're trying ones um, working as well. We have to shut them all off to get them working. There we go. Sorry about that. We shall also be focusing on the Bloomington Community Survey uh, this summer and next slide please. There are some details about the Heat Watch campaign. Uh, the goal is to collect temperature data and understand and address heat distribution in the city. Since we are not uh, sure about the da date, the specific date, the campaign needs to be organized on one of the hottest days uh, during the year. And we are waiting on NOAA for, to tell us what the hottest day is going to be. We have an estimate that it's going to be between July 26th and 8th of August. Uh, so we would require volunteers and navigate, we would require drivers and navigators to drive around the city through predetermined routes of 30 minutes each and the, the activity has to be done thrice a day so that we know the temperatures in the morning, afternoon and the evening because if the city doesn't cool in the evening we have more problematic issues. Uh, the training, there's a training all volunteers would have to go through a training. It can, they can opt for a virtual or an in-person training. The trainings are scheduled on July 12th and 13th and incentives that will be given to the volunteers would be a $50 gift, uh, $50 gift card if they volunteer for two or more meetings. Next slide, please. We will also be engaging in the Bloomington Community Heat Survey uh, this summer. The survey date is expect the survey is expected to launch around 8th of July, and we while that heat watch activity was planned to design on the supply side of heat, 
this community's heat survey will help us understand the demand side of heat, uh, what helps the community, what hurts the community. And we also want to understand how heat waves impact residents and this will help us develop a tailored heat response plan for the community and help us better prepare for the future itself. Uh, the survey would take around 10 minutes roughly. We are planning to do a sampled survey around the Bloomington community throughout all the census tracts. And feel free to participate and spread the word around the survey. Thank you. Thank that was all. Any questions about the program? OK. If there are, feel free to email. Oh, Sarah. Since the dates are nonspecific, if someone is going to be away in any part of that period, they should not volunteer. Is that the understanding? Not really. Actually, we would soon uh, be made, the date will be made available, available to us very soon. It's just the National Weather Services and NOAA, they only have a specific amount of time where they can accurately predict the date. So we are waiting on them. We should have that date in a couple of weeks. And we'd, we'd spread around the word again with the specific date in mind. So by the time of the training, you should actually know the Absolutely. dates? Absolutely. I see. Absolutely. OK, thank you. Okay. If any other questions come up, feel free to send them to me, and I can pass them along. And then the next. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a, I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, just really quickly, are there any age limits on who can volunteer to do this? No, there are no age limits, but you would want to uh, you would want to make sure that you don't have any uh, heat-related illnesses or any any other any other prob uh, health-related problems that would uh, that would not allow you to be outdoors during that time. Uh, that's it. There are no age limits. We'd be happy to have volunteers from all age groups. I think I was um, interested in whether, um, you know, some smart, really smart teenagers who are pretty committed to, to climate action and interest in that might be good volunteers for this. So thank you for the information. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And I will move on to the BMC MPO 2050 Metropolitan uh, Transportation Plan. Um, we had three focus groups in mid-May uh, that focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, transit, and active transportation. So I've included in the packets the full summaries of those meetings. Um, each focus group is several pages long, so I won't go over in detail. Um, but they are there for those who want to um, peruse them. And then uh, on July 22nd, that's a Monday, we will be having our second public meeting from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Switchyard Park Pavilion. Um, and our consultants will be coming in and giving us an update um, on how the plan is going and um, doing uh, just more public engagement with the community about priorities. Any questions about the MTP? Thank you. Oh, Sarah. Just a comment. Um, really appreciated the lengthy explanation of what went on in the focus groups. It was extremely interesting to read through and to hear what each one of those focus groups had to contribute to the uh, process. So thank you for that report to us. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, we don't have any old business, so we'll move straight into the new business, and it's the uh, Bloomington Monroe County MPO fiscal year 2024 to 2028 TIP amendments. So several of these are residual from um, the May uh, policy committee meeting. Um, I believe those would be one through nine in the um, staff report, and then numbers 10 and 11 are from the most recent. They're new, um, and they were approved or recommended for approval 
from the Technical Advisory and Citizen Advisory Committees. So uh, I will go through the full staff report um, and we have Becky Packer here from NDOT uh, for any questions that need to be addressed from the NDOT projects and then we also have a Monroe County project so I think Lisa can provide insight to that if there are any questions. So for DES number 200231, this is State Road 45 from the State Road 46 bypass to North Russell Road. This would be moving fiscal year 24 PE funding to fiscal year 25, and this would be $450,000 in STBG funds. DES number 180037-1, this is State Road 37 at the intersection with Dillman Road. This is to increase fiscal year 25 construction funding by 719 thousand eight hundred and thirty three dollars does number two three zero zero nine one nine this is i-69 in the rockport road bridge it's a new project um, from last month that uh, indot has removed pe funding and only has construction funding and this would be stbg for a total of two hundred thirty four thousand two hundred eighty two dollars number four this is does number two three zero zero nine two zero I-69 Tap Road, it's a new project. Again, um, PE funding was removed from what you saw last month. So now it's only construction with STBG funds for a total of $245,438. Number five is DES number 2300921, I-69 Chambers Pike. Again, a new project and similarly, the PE funding was removed. So construction, STBG funding, for a total of $256,594. Number six, this is DES number 2300998, the State Road 45 Small Structure Replacement. It's a new project. Um, the, there is still PE, CE, and CN funding on this. Number seven, DES number 2301124, this is State Road 446 of State Road 46, also a new project. Um, this is utilizing NHPP funding um, for, and there will be a PE and CN phase on this. Does number 2301227, this is State Road 446 to Morris Pike. It's also a new project. This will be utilizing HSIP funding and will have PE right of way and CN phasing. Does number 2400106, State Road 45 at Liberty Drive. A new project, and this will utilize HSIP funding for right-of-way and construction. And then moving on to the um, newer uh, amendments that were not on last month's um, agenda is DES number 2101785. This is the repair or replace lighting in various locations in the Seymour District. This is um, to move 2.6 million of construction funds from fiscal year 24 to fiscal year 25. And then, so like I said, one through 10 are all NDOT projects. So moving on to the Monroe County project is number 11, does number 1902772, Rockport Road, bridge number 308 replacement. The letting date was moved to July, 2025. So the funding schedule um, is just to satisfy that new letting date. So right away was moved to fiscal year 2025 and then CE and CN funding um, were moved to fiscal year 2025. 2026, none of the amounts changed. Are there any questions on the uh, TIP amendments? Seeing none, I move to approve the TIP amendments. So we have a motion, do we have a second? We have a second. second. Okay, we've got two seconds there. Um, any discussion? Um, any public comment? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Horn. Yes. Kinsey. Yes. Packer. Yes. Ferris. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ridge? Yes. Writer Band? Yes. Swafford? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Hiddle? Yes. Rosenberg? Yes. 
Bannock. Yes, Maria. And Daly. Yes. 12 0. All right, moving on to public comment on matters not included on the agenda. Seeing none, uh, communications from committee members for items not included on the agenda. Well, okay, moving on to our upcoming meetings. Uh, the policy committee uh, does not meet in July, summer break. Uh, so the next meeting of this board will be August 9th, 2024 at 1.30. Um, Technical Advisory Committee will be July 24th at 10 a.m. Citizens Advisory Committee will be July 24th at 5.30, and all of the meetings are available on hybrid also. And I move for an adjournment. Move to adjourn.